What happens when a child is responsible for the violent death of another child? Are there laws to protect both parties? Today, we will discuss the consequences of our inadequate legal system with the story of Tiffany Eunuch and Lionel Tate. My name is Sophia Talley, and this is True Crime in It. On July 28, 1999, in Broward County, California, Lionel Tate was a rambunctious 12-year-old boy who loved to watch wrestling, but he was also known to be the school bully. On that summer's day, Lionel's mother, Kathleen Grosset Tate, was babysitting six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch, who was the daughter of a very close friend. But instead of watching the two children, Kathleen decided to go to sleep in an upstairs bedroom while the children entertained themselves downstairs, completely unsupervised. Now, I will say in 1999, it was not uncommon for a 12-year-old to watch a younger child. I'm a millennial and my brother was around 13 when my mom let us stay home by ourselves. But it would only be for quick errands, like a quick doctor's appointment, a trip to the bank, something like that. The problem here, though, lies in the fact that Lionel was a known bully at his school and not a child that you would put in charge of watching another child. What happened while Kathleen slept has been highly debated as the only witnesses that were there were the two children. But using police records... I will retell what is deemed to be the most plausible story. As mentioned prior, Lionel was a big fan of professional wrestling, which in the 90s was at its heyday. Lionel claims that that day he wanted to show Tiffany some wrestling moves that he picked up from the TV. But instead of just showing Tiffany these moves, he decided to practice them on the 48-pound first grader. In comparison, Lionel was a hefty 5'4 and weighed 166 pounds, which is taller and heavier than me, a grown woman. So you can only imagine a small first grader just doesn't have a chance. Lionel flung Tiffany around the room like a rag doll. He then put Tiffany in a headlock and began smashing her against the table, causing her to sustain deadly injuries that a prosecutor would later compare to those sustained by falling from a three-story building. Though Lionel claims that he put Tiffany in a headlock, Her body was just broken and the little first grader spent her last months, her last moments screaming in pain. Her liver was lacerated from being stomped on and her extremities were covered in bruising. Her brain was swollen and she had fractures in her ribs and skull. Obviously, these injuries are not caused by just a headlock. These injuries are caused by being beaten to death. Through this ordeal, Kathleen heard the commotion, but only yelled for the children to be quiet. It is rumored, but I cannot confirm, that Kathleen yelled specifically for Tiffany to stop screaming while she was being brutally murdered. About 45 minutes after her warning, Lionel appeared at her at his mother's bedside. He tells her that he put Tiffany in a headlock and now she was not breathing. What came next was a legal circus that is still being discussed today. And now it's time to hear from our sponsors.
What's more important than a peace of mind? Nothing. And that's what NordVPN is here for, to give you the peace of mind while you are online. And with all of the threats that you face today on the internet, it is more important than ever to be sure that you have the best VPN you can get. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service, offering the fastest connectivity, the most servers, and next-gen encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all of your computers and devices, no matter the operating system. With NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth, you never have to worry about a slow connection connection either and plans start at under four dollars per month so grab your exclusive nordvpn deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe or use the code believe that's b-l-e-a-v to get up to 70 percent off your nordvpn plan plus one additional month for free it's also risk-free with nord's 30-day money-back guarantee So as a mom, literally my only time to myself, my only me time is when I get into the shower. And today's sponsor, Way, is helping me up my shower game with their Melrose Place Body Cleanser. This cleanser balances out and nourishes your skin. And it just has this really luxurious lather that just turns my shower experience into the spa day that I crave every single day. Experience the new Melrose Place body creme and body cleanser. Your body, your way. Go to T H E O U A I dot com and use code Believe B L E A V to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's 15% off your entire order at T H E O U A I dot com, code Believe. And let's get back to our story. We left off at the tragic death of six-year-old Tiffany Eunuch, who was murdered by her playmate and family friend, 12-year-old Lionel Tate. The courts, though, had an unprecedented situation on their hands. Here, they had a 12-year-old who just acted out this brutal murder. Upon his first police interview, Lionel claimed that he only hit Tiffany four times, but in later interviews, he reenacted murder under the supervision of a psychologist. The reenactments and his responses in the police interviews did not come close to explaining the damage found on Tiffany's body. It was obvious that the 12-year-old was lying to avoid being in trouble. And I say that in quotation because that's just how kids think. To him, he just thought he was going to get in trouble. Lionel was presented with a plea deal where he could plead guilty to second degree murder in exchange for three years in juvie and 10 years on probation. Now, this plea deal is actually pretty good as it allows for a chance of rehabilitation, psych treatment, and pretty much 10 years of integration into society. All things that Lionel did desperately needed. Kathleen, though, did not agree with this plea deal. She did not want Lionel to spend three years in juvie, and she just wanted him to be home with her. And so, unfortunately, not taking this deal meant that Lionel would be tried as an adult and could possibly face first degree murder. Though he is too young for the death penalty, even under Florida standards, which in Florida, you can receive the death penalty at only 16. There is a chance of him receiving life in prison, meaning that he would be in prison until the end of his natural life. The interesting part is that Florida has the felony murder rule, which is a rule that means that the jury only needed to prove that Lionel knew he was hurting Tiffany to convict him of his first degree murder. They did not need to prove that he had the intention to kill or injure. As you can imagine, it was easy to prove that Lionel knew that he was abusing Tiffany. The jury came to their decision in just over three 
hours, Lionel was found guilty of first-degree murder. Because of the controversial felony murder rule, the jury did not have a chance of giving Lionel anything less than that. As a jury, you have to follow the law. And as a result, the jurors were just distraught with one woman stating it was horrible really horrible. If there was any way that we could have gone with a lesser offense justified in any way, and we all wanted to, end quote. Lionel Tate was sentenced to live out his natural life in prison without the possibility of parole for a crime that he committed at the age of 12. And of course, Florida met with a ton of backlash because he was only 12 and just did not have a full understanding of the consequences of his actions. He knew he was hurting Tiffany, and he possibly knew that he was killing her. But children don't understand the finality of death because their brains are still developing. So the fact that he was tried as an adult in the first place is wrong. And the fact that the legal system made it so easy for him to be convicted of life without parole is just ridiculous. And the fact that he was trialed instead of his mother, it's just, I don't understand that. She was the one in charge of watching the children and she failed to watch them, resulting in a death. Just so much is wrong here. Lionel was a 12-year-old black boy without a father in his life who had anger and behavioral issues. And instead of getting the help that he needed, He was put in jail with hardened criminals. What happens next, though, is a testament to why rehabilitation is important in cases like this. In 2004, a state appeals judge overturned Lionel's conviction, releasing him from jail with only one year on house arrest and 10 years probation. This is great. However, it just came a little too late. Just over a year after this, Lionel was back in police custody after attempting an armed robbery that ended in the assault and battery of an uninvolved bystander. Lionel disposed of the gun that he was only illegally against the terms of his probation, and he refused to admit where he got the gun from. In the end, after a recanted guilty plea, Lionel was charged with 10 years in prison for armed robbery and 30 years for in- violating his parole. He was allowed to serve these sentences simultaneously. It's obvious that Lionel's time in jail did not rehabilitate him because the jail rehabilitation program is a joke. All Lionel learned in jail was how to obtain an illegal gun. He also learned not to snitch and how to commit violent crimes and who to commit them with. That's it. It's pure luck that the victim of the armed robbery was able to run away unharmed because he could have easily died and this story could have just went from bad to worse. Lionel's story is heartbreaking all around because if only he had taken that plea deal when he was 12, and by he, I mean his mother, because again, he was 12. He could not understand what that plea deal meant. His mother could, his lawyers could, but they both decided against it because they didn't think he deserved any time in in juvenile hall, which now the lawyer says that he completely regrets this decision. No, duh. If only Florida had laws in place to protect juveniles in this case, you know, then all of this could have been avoided and Lionel could have had a shot at a normal life. I cover this story today in hopes that you think about how Lionel's story happens every single day and how we as a country choose to forego rehabilitation and allow this cycle of violent crime to continue. My name is Sophia Talley and this is True Crime in Knit. For more information, including show notes and sources, please visit www.thedrugtheater.com slash true crime.
And now it's time for our knitter mission. So I was actually able to knit for most of this recording. I'm super excited about that. And the reason why I was able to knit was because I am working on endless stockinette for this body of my cardigan that I have been working on for about a month, it feels like now. It's, I don't know if I'm close to being done, but I should be done pretty soon. And I am just super excited to get this one tested and out there because I feel like I have been embarking on this cardigan journey forever. <laughs> and my gauge isn't even small. My gauge is a generous, like normal worsted weight sweater gauge. It goes much faster than a fingering weight. The sweater is just taking me forever. But that's okay because I cannot wait to show it to you guys. So this week, if you are watching this on Monday, the day that this episode released, then you may have noticed that over the weekend, I released a new pattern. So here's my mitten. They are a convertible mitten. So what happens is that you can wear them as a fingerless mitt and they have a fold over cuff. So all you need to do is unfold the cuff and cinch the built in drawstring and then you have a mitten. And it is one of my favorite designs yet because I work a lot outside. When I take my son outside, I take my laptop, my knitting, something, so he can run around and play with the dog and I can get some work done. It's a win-win situation. But I have been struggling with cold fingers. It's just something that has been a struggle with living in the Midwest. I have a very open backyard and it is very, very, very windy. So I try to use regular gloves that my dexterity in them is not great, specifically when I'm working with spreadsheets with hundreds and hundreds of little cells. And then if I have mittens on, you know, which are comfy, I can't knit in them and I can't text or take photos or anything. So these convertible mittens came to my rescue because you can wear them um, folded over as a fingerless glove. You can have your fingerless glove kind of slouch down a little bit so you have more coverage or you can wear it as a complete closed mitten. And I just needed that that flexibility with my hands, specifically with everything being touchscreen. So that has really helped. It changed my life and it seemed to have been changing, changing your guys' lives as well. So that's pretty awesome. The pattern is available on Ravelry and on my website. I'll put a link, of course, in the show notes. And what I like about this mitten, it takes very little yarn. I prefer using untreated wool because it is super warm. And even the stitch I use, it's a very tight gauge with a textured stitch, which just helps to keep the cold out. There is almost zero shaping on the hand. All the shaping is done in the thumb gusset. So it's a very straightforward, beginner-friendly mitten design. Um, anyone can do it. It is so super simple. It's one of my easiest patterns yet. And it is size for all adult hands and it's easy to modify. So if you need to make it for a certain, you know, a longer, shorter, wider hand, it's super easy to modify. The main stitch that it is knit in is very easy to remember. I think it's like a three row repeat. So, I mean, it's just perfect popcorn knitting. A few of my testers even knitted a few of these because they really like the knitting process. And they like making changes and just making it their own. So I know it's my own pattern, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you check it out because it's changed my life. And that's it for today. And I hope to see you next week on True Crime and Knit. Bye.